in the IE. Orochi Wolf, uh, I believe Jump City can enter? Can Jump City enter? No, no. He okay. was actually PR'd before. Yeah, true, true. Okay. Yeah. I actually, I actually still wish Jump City and Dino can enter because they're actually two of my favorites yeah. as well. So I'm like, ah, oh, they're PR'd. So I guess I get a good benefit because now they're on that high level, mm -hmm. but they can't enter the Arcadian. So I'm always trying to look for what players in the SoCal Smash League are actually making it up there. And Orochi Wolf is unranked here in SoCal. And he's definitely one of those players that if we could go high in the Breakthrough 2 bracket. We, we always talk about the legends, those hidden bosses, those gatekeepers. But you never r actually run into them until you see them That's on stream. It's like, oh, you're actually here. You're yeah. actually a gatekeeper. You're not a legend. <laughs> All but right. their gameplay is legendary. But I mean, speaking of kind of a legend, DOS is a little bit of a legend himself. Yeah, definitely. You can't <laughs> sleep on DOS. Yeah, you can't sleep on DOS. And I definitely know... Uh, speaking of Breakthrough, at Breakthrough 1, him and uh, Shinzo had a legendary rivalry that ended at top Breakthrough. So I know Dallas kind of has a name to himself, and I definitely know he wants to find himself a little bit of a higher placement at Breakthrough 2. And his first step in here is going to find one of my favorite picks. Let's see if he can actually take out Orochi Wolf. Yeah, um, what's actually really interesting is I would normally say that this shouldn't be a problem for Orochi Wolf, knowing that he plays Caesar, uh, Caesar a lot of times in mm -hmm. uh, the Inland Empire. But... It's it just it's just the fact that Toon Link and Link are two different characters in this yeah. game. Boomerang's different, bombs different, upbeat's different. Mm -hmm. Literally, almost everything about them is different. But their power is extraordinary. Yeah, that's kind of one of those deals. Once you let them have the stage and have what they want, it's really hard to come back for. And Toss is definitely looking to find that in there. He's kind of playing the "Come Catch Me" game. Yeah. Here. So tossing out the projectiles, and every time Orochi Wolf tries to step in, Doss looking for that quick percent. I do like how Doss is going for those up tilts, so that's, that's a nice call out that if Orochi Wolf tries to approach um, from the air, he's going to get sniped out by that up tilt. What's really cool about the up tilts as well is when he does an up tilt, it's not a random up tilt. It's a perfect pivot up tilt, mm -hmm. so he can space himself away from Orochi Wolf. So if Orochi Wolf ever decides to go for an option, he's uh, a little bit farther than Orochi Wolf wants him to be. Yeah. All right, Orochi Wolf now coming back to the stage. This is pretty much a man, any man's game here. Orochi Wolf quickly sending him to the sky, but he's not going to find much. I do, one of those things that I do like seeing from Orochi Wolf is he doesn't find the up air. He goes for the quick down air, and some players may not be ready for that. Yeah. Some players already air dodge the up air, and they're not ready for the down air. So Orochi Wolf right then and there, he covers two bases. Yes. He covers the ability that your opponent might actually get off away from your up air, and he's going to go for an air dodge. And that's a good call out to call it out with a down air. What a lot of people don't really notice about down air, though, it's like, it, like when he's up at the blast zone and he down airs, he auto cancels his dare. Yeah. But do good thing on DOS, he got yeah. he got his uh his confirm into up air. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the things about Link and Two Link's up air is that it, I I'm not sure if Two Link's up air beats an air dodge, but it is a lasting hitbox, so you have to be careful. You don't want to always air dodge on it. Yeah, uh, DOS. Oh, oh, I thought I thought he got clipped. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, DOS is doing really well at doing the keep away game. And saying, hello, I'm right here. Catch me if, yeah. you can, if you can get through my projectiles. Exactly. And look at the way the DOS plays. Is that he tosses out these projectiles, but then he starts closing in the gap. And once he does, Orochi Wolf takes a little bit of percent, and then DOS runs away. And then when, when DOS wants to approach, it's not, it's not I'm going to run in and grab you. It's no, I have a Zare. I'm going mm -hmm. to run in, Zare, and... Wow! That forward air is super powerful, and Orochi met himself with it. Kind of lose the stock. Oh I didn't even let you finish your thought process. I was trying to analyze you. Das, <laughs> I play with you, but please. <laughs> like, all right, like, what's weird about Toon Link's forward air? It doesn't sound like it hurts. Mm -hmm. But as we saw right there, Orochi Wolf died at 70. I mean, I've seen Zan get some ridiculous kills with Rage and some crazy stuff with Toon Link. I mean, especially his bomb plays, the way that Zan plays Link. I've never seen anybody play Toon Link the way Zan does, still to this day. But I do like how Das incorporates that game plan where he's always looking to cover his bases and force opponents into a position where he takes the better advantage. And right there, he tossed out those projectiles and then it forced Orochi Wolf in a bad spot where he either had to air dodge or take that forward air. And unfortunately, Orochi Wolf found that forward air only. Yeah, um... Well, Owolf is doing a little bit better, uh, calling out the projectiles now and playing a little bit more aggressively. But it's not like, oh man, you tilted me. I'm gonna start running in, getting hit by yourself. It's more of a calculated aggression now. Yeah. Because Owolf is getting inside his space and not allowing him to uh, really throw out anything. And when he does, he throws out a tilt. He doesn't go for his spin dash as often. He's right next to him. He either goes for grab or he o uh, either goes for tilt. Yeah. And now we're starting to see Owolf actually just going for running with shield, and that's what you kind of want to do against Link. 
That's a good counterplay. Just run and hold shield. And then Link, would, chances are you could find a grab or find a punish. But I do like, one of those things I do see from Das is that he plays with his bomb and the Nair really, really well. We yeah. saw that pressure with them on the shield. Yeah, he's just playing around his projectiles again. And Olaf is actually letting him set up. Um, but it's really smart when Olaf tries to approach, he does hold shield. Because when Toon Link does get a grab, he's not like Link as soon. There it is, man. I'm telling nice you. Nice there. He but, covers two bases. Let me let you finish your top like, also, though. Oh, all right. oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Tink cannot confirm anything off of grab. Mm -hmm. He throws you, and that's it. That's all the damage you're going to take. So Olaf, Olaf runs in and says, you know what? I'll take the damage. But if if I win the exchange, you're taking more damage than I would if I get a grab. Yeah. If, if you grab me. My bad. <laughs> But like I said earlier, you know, Olaf was doing that move where he went for the up air and the quick down air. Something I don't see too much of Sonics um, that often, maybe because I don't watch a lot of Sonics on stream. <laughs> but it's the fact that Olaf covers two bases. And if you get clipped by it, you know, if you do the one thing, you're still going to get hit by one or the other. Yeah. So that's really good for Orochi Wolf. He's always looking to cover those two areas. Um, that our opponents may be making the, the mistake there. It's going for the air dodge so early and not drifting away or just trying to think it's safe. I do want to see Dostar going for downer there once he finds himself up in the air with Orochi Wolf because it can be, uh, lead up to some crazy cheese. Yeah, Olaf is doing really well at keeping Doss on the side now. And whenever Doss wants to opt for ledge, he just goes for a ledge trump. Mm -hmm. And then even even when Doss wants to punish uh, Olaf on the uppy, as we all know, hopefully, the uh, Sonic is invincible for some time on the uppy. Exactly. All right. Doss is going to find some percent here. And even Paul because of stock. But like you said, Orochi Wolf is kind of bringing this interesting gameplay where he's just going for burst damage. And then he walks away. Look at that. Didn't see that he found any opportunity. Decides, you know what? I'm going to roll away. And then Doss didn't see any opportunity. So he decided, like, I can't convert off that. But he will convert off that right now. Nice bomb into up air. Uh, second win from Doss, if anything. But he has a sizable lead to come back with. Um, if Olaf ever felt like it, he just time him out now. Yeah, and it could. I mean, we are at the two minutes and 30 seconds mark. So if Olaf wants to pull out the card, I mean, I wouldn't blame him. A victory is a victory. I know very well that Olaf doesn't like to time people out, though. But he will go for it if needed. Right now, he has a large lead. And that bomb can kill Doss if he held on to that a little yeah. longer. Doss able to get away from that, but Doss has quite the hill to climb. I feel that one of the first steps is actually, yeah, what, kind of like what you see him doing, is that he's staying away from the stage, but now he's trying he to has no double jump. <sighs> okay, yeah, but he got up, he's definitely going to help him out. Really smart up -y. A lot of players would just go below ledge and up -y, and that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a free spring for Sonic. Doesn't matter who you are, that spring will most likely hit you. Mm -hmm. And Doss, knowing really well that if he get, did get hit by spring, there's a chance it will send him to the right side, so might as well go for the early up B. Mm -hmm. And now coming into a minute and 45 seconds, guys. This is Doss's game to probably start coming back, and he's able to find that up to a conversion there. I mean, I feel that once he starts setting up the projectiles, he can find himself in a good spot. Nice nice job hugging oh, the ledge, no. but coming up with that, that Zer. Very iffy on Doss's part. Very, very iffy. I felt that Doss actually should have gone for a forwarder instead. Because if, if um, the way it works with Link is that if I'm not sure if it works with Toon Link, but if your opponent is closer on the ledge, going for forwarder is such a good option because it has a lot of shield damage, shield stun, and shield pushback. Yeah, so definitely. That, it gives you enough time to actually come back on the stage and go for a grab. And you only want to go for Zare if they're spaced away from you at a certain level. And but, what's, what's sad about that Zare was that Olaf was holding shield. He was just calling out what Doss would do. Mm. I'll take the I'll take the hit, but it's going to be on my shield. I'm mm -hmm. going to punish accordingly. He takes the hit when he wants to, and only if he sees the really good benefit of it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. But now we're going on to this game three here. I want to see if Doss can actually clutch this out I'm against Olaf. Or Olaf, Olaf side looking to find a run over. Right Whoa, there, nice. same setup, and Doss actually able to get away from that. He's found the counterplay around it. As long as Doss can time exactly when he wants to air dodge and when Olaf wants him to air dodge, he he won't need to get hit by any of the confirms off of up, up throw or spin dash. <laughs> All right, now Doss is controlling the stage even though Olaf is out of it and in the lead. Doss has a much, pretty much a big stage to play around with and start tossing out these projectiles and set up a wall here. And that's what we kind of see uh, Doss doing. He's building the wall slowly and looking to find a way where uh, Olaf will fall into it. 
this is actually a really good uh, counter pick from DOS because Toon Link and Link have really strong forward smashes that can kill you mm -hmm. really early. And Smashville, a stage just for that type of kill. Oh, nice air dodge through his bomb, it's Not only that, just his forward smash, but he's got a forward air, too, and that's oh, yeah, super definitely. powerful. And if, when the way that Link can convert those bomb throws into a forward air, that's a really good opportunity for DOS here. And I've been told by Captain Andrew, though, that you don't give Sonic Smashville. I believe it's because of fair and bear. Ah. You can chain fair, and bear kills you super early if you don't... If you're not careful. Oh, about you're it. right. Yeah, I've actually played a few Sonic players, and I got hit by Bear like three times, and I died. And I was yeah. like, "What?" <laughs> Shout out to Captain Andrew. I miss that guy every now and then. He does appear a guy. most uh, most of the time at FPF. I'm pretty sure he goes to the bi-weeklies as well when he can. All right, but O Wolf looking to finally find himself in the situation to close the stock. Now we're back into the spot where Das controls the stage, He's setting up that wall again, and O Wolf looking to come through it. Now approaching with shield, but he's going to get hit by that bomb. Olaf now off the stage. This is Das's edge guard opportunity here, and I like how he's going to let him go over. And he that tipper forward air. There is, I don't believe there's a difference in uh, in launching hitbox mm -hmm. for any of forward air, but he got him with the very tip of forward air. He called out the drop shield. Olaf trying to run in. Yeah, and got him with a fair. And it's the fact that like Olaf was seeing the projectiles, and Das found the setup there, and that's kind of what you want to do. You want to always have. The setup means to find that forward air or find the kill conversion that you want. Nice play from Das. You actually saw him air dodge and drift a little bit to the left. So yeah. Now he was really, really, really well aware. Untackable. Untackable right there. All you could really hope for is Bomb to hit you after that. Because <laughs> Bomb was blinking. Yeah, it was. But Bomb didn't help him. All right. Now Das back into the stage. He has a little bit of percent on a Roshi Wolf here. Playing super cautious how he comes back on the stage. If he comes back the wrong way, Orochi Wolf will find a lot of percent and possible percent to catch up and even go on a bigger lead. I like how uh, when over, uh, whenever a wolf is mm. underneath the platform, he's just sharking it. He doesn't always go for an option. He goes, ru he runs under platform and holds shield and yeah. says, hello, I'm still here. You can't set up for free. Yeah, and he can do options out of shield as well. All right, but now Orochi Wolf slowly but surely finding his way in against Doss. Das is playing this very cautiously, though. I like how he's not really going in too much, just setting up the wall, looking for his opportunity to find his, his way in. And I like how he's tossing out these bombs, too. This is a little bit of a shield pressure on Orochi Wolf, but he actually walks away from that one. Luckily for Olaf, he didn't hold shield any longer because based on where the platform was and how small his shield was, that that grab into back, uh, back throw would have killed... Sonic at 50%. Mm -hmm. They were too close to the blast zone for it not to. I mean, speaking of timeouts, like you said, Orochio may not, liking time, uh, may, may not like timing timing out himself, but Doss is looking for the situation here because we're now at a minute and 55, and Doss is looking to run the t clock as much as possible as long as that doesn't mean he loses the stock. Yeah, Olaf is, is, Olaf is running into that jab way more often than he was game two. Mm -hmm. And holding shield against Doss... Uh, like he did in game two, will help him get the percent way easier in this game. Even though there's 1 minute 30, 30 left on the clock, yeah, Olaf needs to put the safe percent on him now. Exactly. I mean, like you said, Olaf has been striking it, but he hasn't been able to find any blood on the water. And he's only finding the percent on himself. I mean, Olaf approaching a little too much. Maybe want to start looking for a grab opportunity here. Able to find that Nera off that spin attack. Now yeah, a little no bit job. of a stage control for Orochi Wolf, but he's going to have to let that go as Link comes back to the tether. <gasps> Whoa! Nice call out. The bomb? Okay, yo, no, yo. I yo, the bomb that was, was sick. I, I literally thought he was about to kill him. but We're coming he, into a minute now, guys. Yeah, he, he could have actually killed him with back throw, but Doss going with his comfort, just pivot grab for throw the best you can do in that situation when you panic grab this could be a little bit of an upset against Orochi Wolf Dawson commits to the grab but he's not able to find much Orochi Wolf sniping for that up air but even though he has rage he's un unable to find it that's a little bit of a bomb play there Olaf is getting way too antsy now he's trying he's trying his best to absolute uh, to go in around oh the projectile oh my god and there it, it is there it is there it is Doss able to take out Orochi Wolf with 32 seconds left on the clock I thought Doss was actually going to try to run it too. He I could have too. I really thought that Doss was just running it down, and Olaf couldn't really do anything about it because he let Doss set up. You can't let mm -hmm. Link and Tink set up. Once they set up, <laughs> they're they're just going they're they're going to sit back and have the dream. Yeah. This is my free win. Yeah, you know? exactly.